Hi everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on gender, sex, and sexuality in popular culture. In this mini lecture, we're going to just take a look at the the terms gender, sex, and sexuality, and try to get a basic understanding of what they are, uh, in a little bit of understanding of their place or, or why they're relevant to talking about popular culture. Some of the other videos in this mini lecture series will also uh, dive dive deeper into these topics and subjects, but for right now, we just kind of want to understand terms and, and what it is we're talking about. So the first thing we have to talk about is the name game, and that gender, sex, and sexuality each have a level of meaning to them, and we need to understand what those mean, because we often lop them together, but they're actually pretty different. So we, we talk about gender, we talk about the, the attributes such as personality, ability, and interest connected to a person's sex. And this is the first thing to really remember, is that gender is not the same as sex. Um, that when we talk about gender, we're talking about attributes beyond a person's sex. That is, and we'll talk about sex in a moment, but these are things like personality, these are things like what we perceive as their ability or what we perceive as interests of a particular sex. And the terminology we often use around gender is terms like masculinity, femininity, androgyny, and transgender. Now when we talk about sex, sex is the biological and physiological traits of a person that defines, I'm sorry, that determines their role in reproduction. And I think that's a big thing to think about is, you know, when we say you throw like a girl, that is a gendered term, right? Because we're dealing with what we perceive as attributes. Now me personally, I don't that's not a statement I would make, but we've heard a statement like that. And when we hear that, we're associating gender that is the ability of a particular sex to do things that isn't really related to their biological or physiological traits regarding reproduction right so this is this is the big divide here is that you want to be understanding or you want to be able to understand that when we talk about gender we're talking about how people are perceived in relation to what their sex is because there's a lot of things about gender assumptions that are made around a person based upon what their reproduction is but ultimately those are two we see those as two different things or two different things to be aware of and the language that we use when talking about sex is usually male female intersex transsex and again these refer to largely the reproductive roles and traits um, and so just kind of be aware that there is that distinction and again we'll see this language follow through then we get to sexuality and this is about the physical and emotional attraction to a person and that is often based upon that person's sex and or gender so in this regard we have language such as heterosexual homosexual bisexual pansexual uh, with each of these having uh, the most the ones that we're most familiar with are of course heterosexual homosexual and bisexual pansexual is in a is um, a concept that some identify with by saying, you know, they are attracted basically to anybody in any form. They're attracted to anybody in any gender or any sex, whereas somebody that is bisexual might have more rigid views. This isn't entirely true, and the, the distinctions between bisexual and pansexual is probably less than, say, heterosexual and homosexual. But what we want to understand is that, you know, sexuality is something that is that is outside of sex and gender. That is, you know, gender is how we perceive an individual in relation to their reproduction, re reproductive biology. Sex is their reproductive biology, and sexuality is basically the individual's level of attraction to other people. So just kind of keep this all in your head. So let's kind of take a look at what we see here. Um, a lot of this is based in binaries, kind of one one type on the other, you know, one type on one end, one type on the other. And I think that's something to be aware of is that it's based on binaries, but there's a lot of discussion and criticism of this binary because we're not as either or as we like to pretend we are. 
sex is a great example. We have male and female, but of course we also have intersex, people that are born with uh, some mixture of male and female parts. And in fact, most people don't realize, but I, I think it's something along the lines of 1 to 1.5 percent of people are born with this. Now this doesn't mean you have both male and female genitalia. What it means is that you might have some variation of it. And it's actually, you know, 1.5 percent of the, of the population, that's 1.5 out of every 100 babies, end up in this situation. So it's, it's much more common than people think about and I think it's, it helps us to realize that it's not as extreme as 100% male and 100% female. There's plenty of females who produce, say, more testosterone because they do produce testosterone just like men produce estrogen, um, that those levels fluctuate. And so the, that our actual binary definitions can sometimes be a little challenging. Then we get into sexuality. Of course, we have traditionally this binary of heterosexual and homosexual and of course it's it's never that clear um, in a culture that what we'll talk about shortly promotes or strongly promotes heterosexual we don't know the the, the gradations between heterosexual and homosexual that most people will feel because they're very much drowned out in our culture and then we have gender and again we have masculine and we have feminine and we have that as the, some kind of divide but of course there's plenty of things in which we do that are you know that cross that divide and increasingly in our culture as we have sought for more egalitarian practices we see this this blurring of masculine and feminine if a father is being the the homemaker right it is actually taking care of and raising the children at home um, is that masculine or is that feminine and why is that? So we see this kind of a these different axes in which our gender, sex, and sexuality work off of, and it's important to know that these aren't necessarily um, perfect binaries. There's a lot of gray within them. And then, of course, gender identity is a another one we'll just kind of throw in there because, you know, we have gender, which is what culture perceives, and then we have gender identity, and that's how the individual experiences themselves. So do they identify themselves as a boy slash man or a girl slash woman? Um, so remember, this you know, ge you have gender, which is kind of cultural acceptance of what's manly and what's, what's femin feminine, but then you also have the individual experience, the, the individual identifying, you know, I, I may have the reproduction uh, traits of a female, but I identify more as a boy or as a man. So how does popular culture shape, uh, shape gender, sex, and sexuality? This is important because, of course, just like when we talk about race, and ethnicity, um, it permeates us everywhere. There's always a discussion of gender, sex, and sexuality going on, even when we aren't aware of it. So the first thing we have to understand is that it provides examples. Um, and this can be really good. This can be really useful for people that if you live in a, you know, if you are a, uh, a homosexual teenage boy who lives in an area in which it's not acceptable, you can look to popular culture for examples. However, the challenge is that it sometimes creates stereotypes. And in fact, for, for decades, uh, there were many stereotypes of homosexuals, and there's still some out there within mainstream popular culture. I think that's less so, and we're getting much more, a much better diversity of identities that one can maintain. Uh, it also provides choices. That is, as you have examples, now you have choices, different ways that you can express your gender, your sex, your sexuality. Um, but then it can also create expectations. I think this is most clear, uh, or has been most clear for heterosexual women, is that there are certain expectations. Even heterosexual men um, experience this of these are what, this is what you're expected to do. If you're a heterosexual man, you better be manly, right? You better have a masculine gender that goes out and does certain things, that makes money, that brings home, you know, the bacon, so to speak. Um, that is, you know, does these certain things. So I think it's, you know, it, it, we want to recognize popular culture shapes these two things. It can provide us potentially with choices in different ways of expressing, but it can also, again, create certain expectations. Oh, well, you know, you get married, the, the heterosexual gets married, gets couple, the heterosexual couple gets married, and now they have to have children. That's the expectation. That's what they should be doing. Um, it provides complexity. 
right? And I think this is important is that, you know, people looking out there, seeing the different examples, understanding they have choices, and that their identity does not have to be so simple, um, or that they can appreciate or know that their identity is more complex and find that out there in the popular culture. But the challenge, of course, is that it provides confusion particularly when you don't understand how the other person identifies. And I think one thing we've seen is an increase of awareness and understanding, but there's still a lot of confusion out there about how people identify, why they identify, and the challenges around what it means to identify in certain places. The, poli you know, the, the, the concerns around the politics of it in certain areas where it's acceptable or unacceptable to be certain types of gender, sex, and sexualities. So a couple other things to consider about these concepts. The first is that they are considered fluid. Um, some people, or, or many people might perceive that their gender, sex, and sexuality is fixed, and that's okay. But a lot of the research indicates, you know, there, there's a certain amount of fluidity. Um, potentially, you know, potentially how strongly you are uh, pr how strongly you are connected to your gender may fluctuate at different times or perceive your sex or um, be attracted to certain types of um, genders and sex. Some of that can can be more fluid. Um, in that position, that is where you end up kind of on that previous screen with the different um, axioms, you know, uh, different axes, sure. Why not? Um, that position is determined by both nature and nurture. Now, much more strongly, we're seeing, particularly if a person identifies as um, as homosexual or heterosexual, that's very much influenced by uh, by genes or, or by kind of the the genetic dynamic. However, um, and that may even be true when we talk about sex and exactly what people are born with. However it's also determined by environment in that there is some arguments out there that you would see a lot if if our culture wasn't so strongly emphatic about heterosexuality that you would see much more bisexuality that is a more uh, openness to experiencing different things and, and that comes from the idea that it's been taboo for so long that nobody considers it a choice or that it's, it's very rarely considered a choice or the ability to experiment leads down certain ways. So I think it's important to understand that one's position among these different things is very much influenced by kind of genes and, and you know that process but there are things culturally that can influence how much one can really explore and understand their position. And then that there's a variety of ways um, of understanding this. And what I mean by that is uh, there's a lot of different identities that start to come out or come to be understood as we look into gender, sex, and sexuality. And many of them for, for the common person is pretty foreign. Um, and I think that, you know, bringing an understanding and, and looking at people to understand that, you know, they identify in, in many different ways, you know, terms that we that you may not be familiar with but are out there are terms like asexuality, I had mentioned before pansexuality, uh, omnisexual, intersexual. These are terms that you may not be familiar with and I think the most important thing is that you understand that no matter what your gender, sex, and sexuality is, that doesn't mean it's the same understanding that everybody has about their own or about others. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you very much for listening and see you in the next video.